Hi, Vincent Everts here. Can I wish you a wonderful, innovative, interesting 2020. We have lots of new tech coming up, so 2020 will be an interesting year. But first, I basically want to look back at you in 2019 because I had some wonderful interviews with you and I'm going to go through them fast and I hope you'll be able to seduce you in looking at them. First, I talked to Vince Cerf and Vince Cerf is the inventor of the internet. He did TCPIP in Cambridge in Stanford and um, he's now one of the top three people at Google. He's the internet evangelist and I asked him, what do you do with all that power? Uh, do you still feel you can manage it? The YouTube, the, the, the YouTube uh, management of content, uh, how you're doing with advertising, the power you have. Is Google still a, 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 a company which want to do no evil or is that just out of the window and it's everything about money now? Really interesting guy, very uh, trustworthy and interesting to see the internals of Google, how they struggle with the power of billions of people who are using the product every day. And secondly, I was very excited to talk to uh, Volkswagen because we went to Volkswagen and uh, Volkswagen um, basically is really serious about electric. And I talked to Mike Steffen and at Autostadt in Wolfsburg, we went there with the um, Association of Electric Drivers and he talks about how he's transferring 18 out of the 60 factories to go fully electric and to make a 30,000 euro our car or cheaper to have a platform to do a new things on IT. They are the only German companies which are really serious about electric driving. Very interesting to watch. He, before that, he was in China and India. He is a really interesting guy in the, uh, in the Volkswagen empire. So that was really interesting. Then uh, I talked to uh, Greg Wright and Greg Wright uh, claims to be Mr. Satoshi. He basically explains how he wrote the paper and uh, who helped him and who was part of it and what his intentions were, what he's doing now. He visited Holland and uh, you know, many people think he's fake, but he's at least he's very smart. He knows a lot about it. He knows a lot about the whole Bitcoin world and the crypto world. And um, he now has a his own Bitcoin uh, coin, which he thinks is the original one. So uh, if you're interested in that, take a look. Then China. For me, China really 2019 was the year of China. And I really went to uh, blockchain is uh, really the year of um, uh, where China said 2019 said. Uh, blockchain is going to be one of the central central technologies in our country, you know, next to AI and big data and all those kinds of things. And I talked to Jonathan Marks. He works for um, a company, a very interesting company, the uh, which is called Ping N. They have 700 million uh, clients, uh, health insurance, and they made an, uh, and they also made blockchain uh, applications. And they connected 400 banks together. Four hundred banks which are using the blockchain to basically interconnect uh, and to do all the payments uh, around. He's also talking about healthcare, how they have a platform of 300 million Chinese people which get elementary healthcare through their platform. Extremely interesting guy, used to work for City Corp. So uh, nice guy. Then uh, we had a fantastic blockchain conference and there were and I have a couple of the highlights uh, there because I had the Dutch Central Bank and the uh, Consumer Authority together and Corny Dorstein had a talk about what do you think about blockchain? What do you think about Bitcoin, crypto? What's going to happen? A very interesting talk there. She so also had an interesting talk with InsureTech and uh, insurance companies are, of course, not the most exciting in terms of technology, but they do a lot with blockchain and she's talking talking about those kinds of uh, things. Then one of the things with blockchain is that you have to work together with a lot of companies and have to exchange data and uh, very sensitive data. So how do you build a consortium? And IBM did a lot of business on that. So that was an interesting talk. And I was also very interesting. Um, uh, you use it also for responsible uh, buying for uh, for buying something. And of course, cobalt is used a lot in batteries. And uh, Franz uh, from IBM is having a talk here, how they're setting up a consortium of all kinds of companies, which are basically um, making sure that cobalt is bought in a very responsible way, bought and could produce in a very responsible way. Then in China, again, um, Professor um, Professor uh, uh, Olinga Tat is working for the Chinese government. He's had an, he's had an, uh, an, an um, advisory role, uh, how to use blockchain in the whole Chinese government. And he knows a lot about it. Unfortunately, he couldn't be there, was in the hospital. So we basically had a Skype conference with him. But he knows a lot about China and how the, how the government is using it. So if you're in that, if you want to know how China is doing that, you should talk to him. Then, um, 
I was really excited about uh, Dave Birch. Dave Birch is, of course, the grumpy old man. He's extremely critical about blockchain. And in this case, we asked him to be critical about blockchain together with big data and artificial intelligence, because that was the focus of the conference uh, that year. And he did a splendid job, really big humor. But also, he makes a good, a very interesting point um, why we should be careful being excited about blockchain, because it will take a while before the old systems will go away. But he's he's, he's really critically busy with it. Then China was my uh, most exciting uh, thing about 2019 and I went to Shenzhen to look at electric driving and um, and the first you have to know why Shenzhen became so big and because it was one of the first cities which went from 30,000 to 30 million and all the production of electric uh, of, of elec electronics is being done there and David Lee is a has been there forever he comes from Taiwan been there forever and he explains how supply chain is organized in China extremely interesting I mean and and Shenzhen is a really interesting city 20,000 uh, electric uh, taxis buses all the bikes are electric and uh, there's no scooter with um, combustion engine uh, and, and he basically gives a very good basic talk. If you want to know the basics about innovation in China and how it grew, you should listen to this his college. Then BYD is a company which made batteries for Nokia and now they have 250,000 people. They're the biggest producer of electric cars, but also electronics. They make 20% of the uh, of the phones uh, worldwide, and they make 50,000 buses. And uh, we visited their headquarters, and and we also have a great interview. How uh, one of the uh, one of the executives says they built 50,000 buses last year, a thousand to Europe, 250 to Germany, England, France, and Holland, and it was a mess. They took them more uh, time to to work for the for the for the Dutch the Germans, then the 49,000 buses which were sold in China. And that's basically a trend. They're much more interested in the internal market, the Chinese company, not the European market, not the American market, and the technology they have themselves. And here's a nice example of what happens when you have 20,000 uh, taxis. And uh, here is a charging platform with 700 uh, fast chargers and all the all kinds of, uh, not only taxis, but all kinds of uh, uh, people uh, charge here, 5,000 a day, and there are four of these squares in, uh, in Shenzhen. Then I was very excited to see MG coming to the Netherlands. They have a SUV. It's only 30,000 euro. It's a very, very beautiful SUV with all the stuff in there. So, you know, we went this year from 50,000 euro with an MP3, with a Model 3, 40,000 with a Kona, and now we have 30,000 with a Chinese company. And that's a huge SUV, and, and the company MG, is from uh, Saic, uh, is a company which makes 7 million cars and they make a lot for Volkswagen and they know how to build cars. It's really interesting. Then I went to China for healthcare, and um, of course, because it's a big country and they, they in the cities there is reasonable healthcare, but on the countryside it's really a problem, and the hospitals are extremely busy. So We Doctors has a, a very interesting um, application where 200 million of Chinese people get elementary healthcare, and here I have a session and I get to a medical specialist in about. 10 minutes to go from and um, to go to call in to to basically talk to a first person who says oh you need to talk to a nurse and then the nurse says oh you need to talk to a specialist and she helps me and gives me the right advice so that's we doctor 200 million people are using that and there's also somebody who says uh, who explains the business behind it how it works then um, I thought it was also interesting, uh, an, 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 an a Chinese doctor, Charles Ali, and he studied in, uh, in Harvard and he is a specialist and he basically worked inside uh, first in America in healthcare, then he worked in the, in the, um, in the Chinese healthcare and then he became, uh, started a digital platform for doctors and 1.2 million doctors are, uh, or sorry, 2 million doctors are connected to his platform and use it to educate themselves, to exchange information and they also have 65 million patients. So digital healthcare is really very interestingly in, in developed there. And, and all kinds of, we went to all kinds of startups. So Hinunu is a company where you have uh, innovation out of a box. Everything you need to monitor your uh, an, a patient is in this box together with an uh, on, on cloud platform. And it's, uh, it's about 500 euro uh, in, per year to, uh, to, to monitor a patient and uh, then somebody can work at home. It's really nicely integrated. It's a French Chinese uh, company. And Tencent, we know from WeChat, they uh, they are also very much in healthcare, and they have 
trusted doctors. Also a platform with 200,000 doctors and 10 million patients. And he explains how you can basically do remote monitoring and remote diagnose. Then I want to say the blockchain, uh, uh, the blockchain, I'm really excited that uh, the Dutch Railways, Railways is uh, sponsoring the um, the Blockchain Innovation Conference 2020. It's on June the 30th. So make sure you put that into your agenda because that is, uh, we're going to talk about a huge amount of data. Internet of Things is really important. They have 20 mil billion data points a day. So we're going to do uh, about predictive maintenance, uh, lots of AI, lots of big data, lots of examples of how you can use it in practice. And there's an avalanche of good solutions this year. It's going to be really interesting. So I thought it was nice to not do it at a financial institution because, I mean, we've done that a lot and that's really where things started. But now also we do it at a logistical company. So Dutch Railroads, 30th of June. So uh, there's a couple of others, uh, other great talks in there. But this is about the basics I want to cover to you. And that's uh, going to be fun. Now, next week, I'm going to talk about the trends of 2020. So um, I hope to see you then. But I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful year. And that you basically can take steps which are daring, interesting, and also meaningful. See you uh, next year.